Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to another episode of Dungeon of the Endless. Here we are on floor 8, we're actually making it close to where I have, uh, the furthest I've ever reached. But we have a pretty solid team right now, we've got three pretty heavy hitters, we have a, uh, two ranged heavy hitters here with Elise Ness and Gork Carozer, who both have some pretty heavy, uh, firepower on their hands. We have, uh, Lady Jolari Tulak, who is our dedicated tank, although she's starting to take a whole lot of damage. I think we need to maybe dedicate her some better armor than just this t-shirt. I think we're actually going to do that right now. If we swap this titanium shirt with the uh, zone device fancy pants uh, neuro stun light armor that we gave to Gork, that might make her a little bit more survivable because this is a 10 defense bonus and this is a 25 defense bonus, which is a pretty huge difference. So we're going to try giving her this instead and seeing if that makes it a little bit harder for her to get horribly murdered all the time because she's definitely taking a lot of damage. Overall, though, these guys have been doing a pretty good job. We also have a support character here in the form of Warden Mormish who has been keeping our systems running at optimum levels to make sure that we can get as much power and resources out of them as possible to keep leveling our characters appropriately so they can keep up with the enemies. Because it's definitely again giving us a hard time. This is a three exits elevator. Not ideal, but definitely not terrible either. We are going to send the whole team out through this door and see what we can find. Hopefully there's something good around here. We're also down to only having 16 power for floor, and this is also where the floors start to become evil. But you'll see what I mean as we get a little bit further in here. The enemy waves start to do something really nasty at this floor, and we're going to have to deal with it, and it might not be pretty. Stick ourselves in an industry generator here, and we're going to leave uh, leave the warden here so that we can actually make sure that even if we don't find anything we can power, we're getting some benefit from him. Because we're going to need to start getting dust pretty quick here, otherwise we can't run these rooms. Like this one. We already do not have enough power to run our second room, which is kind of disconcerting. Let's open another door, though, and see what we can get. Hopefully we get some dust from this area. Nope, we did activate a Stell, though, and this one has... Oh, healing is now twice as expensive for three turns. That's not quite what I was hoping for. Let's go open another door, and hopefully we'll be able to get something good, some dust somewhere. There's a little bit of dust. We can power this now. That's an unusual looking beastie. Oh, it's just the blue snakes. Okay. We've seen them before. Just deceptively evil looking. Okay. Well, this is not where we want to start building up our... Uh, our food production because we can't safely put our uh, our support character over here and make him more likely to not have any enemies attacking him but this might be a good place to start building defenses because we can actually uh, lock them down a little bit better in the large room so we'll throw down two prisoner prods in here and we'll do a tear gas and a pepper spray because that's a pretty decent setup for actually locking down our enemies and we will probably build something in here what do I want to stick in there maybe a food replicator anyway and I might just not power it yet that seems like a plan. That way when we want to move over and start leveling ourselves up faster, we can. Alright, what's down this way instead? Still no dust. Alright, we are in a worrying dust situation here. Still no dust. We did find enemies. Okay. We may want to back up to this room instead of fighting them in here. Just because, yep, as I suspected, more enemies are already incoming. This is gonna hurt, most likely. We're already taking a ton of damage here, which is worrying for the first real wave of the floor. Thankfully, we have a good amount of firepower support here, so we were able to survive that without too much trouble, but... I don't know. If we can't get any more dust than two rooms right off the bat, we are gonna have a hard time. Let's take a look in here. This is a dead-end room. That's good for us. But still no dust, so... It's good, but not great. And more enemies are back. Let's get in the defensive room and try and do what we can to stop them. We really don't have much in the way of defenses right now. Not much at all, I'm afraid. We're also starting to fight enemies whose behavior I'm less familiar with. Thankfully, it seems like they're all basically just targeting us as players. So that's not as bad as it could have been. Let's send you guys up here and check what's through this door. And another dead end. Okay, well. Oh, this is another character in here, Sarah. Unfortunately, we still have a full roster, so we won't be accepting any new characters, but at least we know this whole area is effectively a dead end, except for, well, maybe that way. Oh. Okay, take it back. We did get enough dust to power one more room, though, which might be nice. 
honestly, though, it's it's not a whole lot of, uh, of security at the moment since we don't have a whole lot of other large spaces to protect yet. This might be a good place to put that power once we get the opportunity. For now, though, we're going to come explore down here and see what's at the bottom of this room. It's a large one, so if the enemies appear behind us, we could be in a bit of trouble. But we do have a pretty fast hero here. We should be able to get back and stop him. In here we find a treasure chest, though, and that's nice. Inside we find a Gatling gun. Well, I'm kind of annoyed I purchased one of those now, but it might be better. Or worse. It's worse. Alright, slightly lower quality than the blue one we got already. Blue is generally a pretty high quality gear. I think purple is slightly higher, but it's also much rarer. Alright, well, I can't complain about getting free things. We can sell it and hopefully get some good resources out of it from uh, a salesman somewhere along the line. Let's check one more room here, and then we will see what else we can do. This is the dead end room, which is exactly what I was hoping for. It does have enemies in it, but that's fine. We're going to book it back to the exit, or rather back to our secure zone. Somewhat secure, at least. And at least now we know that we don't have to look in this area anymore, so hopefully we can uh, be a little bit less dedicated to this side of the battlefield. We do have 198 food to spend, so I may spend that on some upgrades here. Probably going to upgrade Elise Ness. In fact, I will just upgrade her. That gets her four more defense, which is good. Some more damage, another wit point, which is pretty cool. Next point in her gets her a passive. What about anybody else? Passive for you. Passive for you. No passive for you. So everybody other than Gork gets a passive ability at the next level up, which makes it pretty valuable to us. Do you get a wit point? No, you don't get a wit point. I was hoping you'd get more wit because we get more, uh, more resources from you, but I'll take what I can get. Alright, here comes the bad guys. We should be able to tear through them pretty quick. Pretty quick indeed. Okay, over this way. The, uh, no, 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 you stay there. You guys come in here. Alright, so we're going to check this room yet next. Hopefully there's nothing in there. We're going to keep that dust power bar here so we can use it if we need it. Dead end, that's what I like to see. And has a treasure chest in it. Very nice. And we can put a structure in here. Very nice. A battlefield injector. I have no idea what that is. Alright, well, I guess we'll find out. Let's throw down a science creator in here, perhaps. Just so that we have one. We can start generating a little bit more science. What is that item we just found? I'm guessing it's a device. It is. The Battlefield Injector. When injected into scorched earth, this powerful biotechnology converts battlefields into lush plains. Oh, nice. However, the wit bonus it gives is not as good as the tools belt. So, it's not as good for our dedicated... Uh, system buffer, but it might be worth giving to somebody who's really slow, who has another slot, like Elise Ness. We already have a photon decelerator here, which gives us three speed. This gives us the same speed bonus as well as a wit bonus. Alright, we'll do this then. She's up to 12 wit now, which is pretty good, but not as good as, more, as, uh, as the Wardens. Okay, well then. Probably shouldn't have built there, actually. Oh, I have one more power bar. We're good. Because I was going to say, if we have to pick another direction from here and we can't actually put defenses up successfully, we're going to be in serious trouble. But we're okay. We're going to throw a prisoner prod in here as well as another tear gas and pepper spray just to make sure that if they do get back to here, we have some more defenses ready for them. I think those are the only slots we had, though. Yeah, there's only three in there. Not amazing, but we'll deal. Time to check the next door in this direction and we'll see what we get. This is a self-powered room. Okay, you know what? I'll take that. That's really good for right now. I could move you back down to here and generate some science real fast, but I still want to kind of take advantage of food generation if I can. It's not as good putting you in here, though, because then you have to fight when the waves come in, and I kind of want them to get weighed down by this a little bit first. I'm not super confident in your ability to tank them by yourself, especially not if there's like six waves that spawn in all these rooms. Kind of worries me still. What we are going to do, though, is we're going to throw in a tactical heads-up display in this room so we get a damage buff, because that'll help us out. Unfortunately, as I suspected, there is a rush of enemies this turn, so we're going to send you back over this way and try and defend our base area. This guy, I believe, attacks buildings. Or perhaps just attacks everything. I don't know what he's doing, but I don't like it. Is that everybody? Nope, there's more coming. I thought it was too good to be true. Alright, there's probably one more wave incoming. Yep, there they are. No, nope, more again. Wow, our health still hasn't regenerated. That's how you can tell. Now we're back to full health. That was some nastiness right there. Okay, well, we didn't need to use any powers that turn, which is nice. Let's go check out this door here and see if this is safe. Probably going to build some defenses in this room, but there's not much I can actually build in there. There's only two slots. Hmm, 
Let's go up then first, rather than uh, potentially not being able to defend the area we're going to. This is not a dead end. Okay. It is a science room, though. That's actually reasonable at this point at this moment. We could go for one of these upgrades. I don't know if I really want to. We have 107 science, so I could afford to randomize and try and get a level up for the stuff we've already got. Uh, the viral injector is not bad with damage over time. 22 damage per second is pretty reasonable. It lasts for 8 seconds as well, so even if they leave the room, it still hurts them. We could try one of these, see what it does for us. I think we're going to do one more randomize, though. That's what I wanted, the Tactical HUD Mark III. There we go. That's going to give us even more damage boost for every one of these that we build. And that sounds pretty good to me. However, we're going to need to book it back this way again. Otherwise, these guys are going to potentially destroy things. Sarah might get killed here, probably will. She's by herself against an overwhelming enemy horde. So we'll see what happens. She's probably dead at the end of this combat. We got a bit of dust there, though, which is nice. This is a nice big room as well, which makes it harder for them to stack up. Big rooms like this are great for defending like this. Looks like she survived, though, which is good. Okay, we're going to send our team over this way. Check out one more door in this direction, since we have one more dust, so we can successfully power it. Hopefully, there's something good on the other side of this door. It's a dead end, and it has loot. Okay, that's actually great. That is really good for us. Mil-spec bracelets, I seem to recall being a terrible d uh, equip item. These give you 5 defense and 6 attack power. That's not terrible. Okay. That's not terrible. We could actually use that instead of the tools belt, because the tools belt right now isn't helping uh, Elise Ness at all, whereas this would make her stronger. Anybody else who needs an equip slot item? Yeah. Tulak needs one. I could give one to them. That would actually be good, because they need more defense right now. Alright, we'll give it to you. I could definitely give it to Elise, but Elise doesn't get hit quite as much as uh, as Jaleri does. So this should be a better position for it. We also have enough space here to throw down another well-protected uh, beacon, unless we want to take the power out of this room to throw it over here, since we did... Uh, no, we didn't defend this area at all. Holy cow. That was kind of pretty lucky there, then. Okay, in that case, let's... Uh... Did we get Tactical Head 3? Or Tactical Head 2? Do we skip a stage? Hang on a second. What are we what are we sciencing right now? Yeah, we did skip a stage. We're going straight from level one to level three. Wow, I didn't know you could do that. Huh. Okay, so you can actually skip intermediary steps. I wonder how that works. I thought you had to get all the previous steps to even have a shot at it. I'm gonna leave this unfilled for now. We're getting plenty of uh, construction power here right now, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to send you over here to get us some more food so we can level our heroes. Even though it puts you at a little bit more risk, we should be able to hopefully protect you. We'll see. But yeah, that's that was really weird. Really weird. Okay, well, we should try and level somebody up here. We have the opportunity to get two... Or the new passive for somebody. I'm going to try and get a new passive for Jaleri and hope it gives her a defensive buff in some kind so she stays alive a little bit better. And it is... Uh, Energivore. Health regeneration plus 15 in unpowered rooms with monsters. Huh. That's an unusual power. Unusual indeed. Sounds useful, though. If we come into areas that we're exploring, then, she'll be able to regenerate just by fighting things. Which is pretty awesome. Let's head over this way and head into one of those very same uh, unpowered rooms. Unfortunately, oh, this is why I wanted to keep the power from here. We didn't get the two dust I wanted to protect this room. All right, so what we're going to do then is we're only going to push up with two heroes instead of three. We're going to send you two to open this door so that nothing spawns in this room while we're at. Ah, that's exactly what I was worried about. We did get some dust, though, so I can put some dust in here. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of slots in there, which isn't great. We found an artifact, which is fine and dandy, but if we can't defend our crystal, we're going to be in serious trouble. So let's throw in one of them. One of them. One of them, to at least slow them down a little bit. And heroes, get over here. We need to protect our armchair commander. Unfortunately, since he's in the battlefield room, he can't actually do anything in there. This is a bad place for him. I was right. We're putting him back in here so he doesn't die a silly death. 
I'm going to bring our actual fighters in here. We are, however... Oh, that was a big explosion. We are going to take advantage of a couple power-ups. We're going to wash out, and we're going to hold the line here, which should protect our buildings and should just generally be a good idea for having things not die. There we go. Time for the duct tape and super glue. No kidding. I am going to actually send you down to the science machine, actually. I'm wasting turns here by not deciding where I want to put him, but I think that's a better place for him to be. And we've just repaired all these devices, which is great. Alright, we're going to head over this side now, and hopefully we'll be able to do some good work over here. We want to try and regenerate those powers quickly, so we'll be able to keep fighting. Surprisingly enough, the game hasn't, uh, hasn't thrown the specific twist at me that I was expecting yet. We'll see if it does it soon. We're going to open the door down here, though, and see what lies beneath. Hopefully some dust. Yay, dust, and a merchant. Excellent. Open that room. This is a good room for us, because we can actually put some defenses in here, I think. There's only three slots again? Only three slots again, but at least that's something. Throw in one of each of these. It'll slow them down, if nothing else. All right. So what do you have for us, sir? You are selling... Oh, you're doing dust exchange again. Dust exchange is not healthy for us. And honestly, you don't have much that soup, soup seems very good. You're selling a lucky rabbit's foot here, which is an item I've never seen before. This bloody victory trophy was torn from a 300 kilogram feral rabbit. But I mean, all it does is gives you wit and health maximum, so that doesn't seem great. The nano bros here are basically no better than the wit item we already have. So I think I'm not too worried about this at all. We can sell them our weapons, though, to get more dust, and that could be good. We sell them both of these and we get one more room's worth of power. Is that worth us doing right now? That would get us at least this room locked down as well. That might be worth it. I was hoping we'd be able to sell it for some resources that we actually need, but I kind of do need dust in this floor. We have no idea where the door is yet, and we're still, uh... Still got a long way to go. Why can't I talk to this guy again? There we go. Alright, we'll sell him the Gatling gun. This is a... Uh... We can't use these, so I don't mind selling them, but... It hurts to get nothing more than ten dust for the items we've been able to find so far. Alright, we'll deal. <clears throat> do we have any more science we can do? Because the Tactical HUD 3 is now finished. There's the Pepper Spray 3. That's a good one. We'll start analyzing that so we can get more time on our lockdown. That's always nice. Okay, well, let's check out this door and see if there's anything through there. Since our team is centered around this area, this seems like a good place to go next. Seven more dust. That's not bad. We found another, another science artifact. Industry Generator 4 would be nice to get, but we need a bunch more science to be able to try it. Tear Gas 2, though, is already good. So we're going to grab that one. Now, there are monsters on the way, so we're going to send our team over in this direction to go intercept them, hopefully. Even if they can't get here fast enough, the, uh, the mind control effects should stop them from getting out of this room. There we go. Now we zoom in and make sure that Jaleri doesn't get absolutely crushed by the various enemies that are undoubtedly going to be moving around in this room. No, we're looking okay. There we go. We unlocked a new picture in our album. Lovely. They did destroy our food replicator, though, which I'm not okay with. Not okay with that at all. Alright, let's build a new one. 35 credits for that. I might even put it over here, because I can put my, uh... My general, uh... <laughs> my armchair general here, the warden, over there. And, uh, not have to worry about it anymore. That might be a good idea, actually. That might be a good idea. I'd like more science, too, but I think putting him over here to keep us leveling up is probably our best choice, because being able to stay ahead of the enemy's curve is a really important thing. So that'll be built in there now, way out of harm's way, and we should be able to take advantage of that. Plus, now this area is a lot more secure, because we have to worry about losing our other hero there, which is going to be nice. Let's check out on this side and see what else we can do. There's a lot of uh, interesting stuff over here. Unusual stuff, even. Alright, let's check out this door and see what's inside. Some dust. Alright, not quite enough to use anything, but hopefully we get one or two from these guys. 
And they're attacking from behind again as well. Okay, well, let's quickly kill through these guys. There we go. We got the one dust we needed to power this room. And let's book it over this way. We should be able to get here because of mind control slowing these guys down. Yeah, we got here. All right, we're good. They're noisy, but we got here. Unfortunately, Jalari is taking a billion damage again. Let's heal you for nine. It's super expensive. Given the rate at which we gain resources, and that, yeah. We, never, we didn't bother rebuilding that, of course. That would have been a silly move. Okay, let's repair these things quickly since we're here. It would be awful to lose our turrets for no good reason, especially since the enemies aren't even really targeting them. Okay, and we're going to head back over in this direction, see if we can explore a little bit further over here and maybe find the exit sometime soon. Overall, this floor has been pretty reasonable for us, though. We've done a good job, I think, so far of finding our way around without getting in too much trouble. Plus, our defenses here are pretty solid. Turns out using the tear gas, the mind control, and a, like a little bit of firepower boost is really useful. There's some more dust, and we found the Pepper Spray 3 upgrade, and we walked into a toxic cloud. Okay, well, we can't get them all, I suppose. Let's go back around this way instead. We'll leave this door open for now. We'll throw some defensive structures in here, and they're swarming us. Okay, throw in some things over here just to make sure that we're safe. We got plenty of resources still from earlier, and we're going to run our team over this way to hopefully stop them from crushing us. Now, if these guys stop and fight each other, we got a chance here. If they don't, we could be in trouble. Thankfully, Jalaria is super fast and got there in time to stop them. However, Jalaria is also taking a ton of hits to the face here. This may be quite unpleasant if we don't get some help there quickly. There we go. Okay. So, we're going to Warcry. That should stop them from attacking Jalaria again. And I don't think we need to use anything else. Warcry is such a good ability. Being able to taunt the enemies to only attack you is very useful for protecting your allies. Okay, let's head over this way. We've got this whole area cordoned off. This is the only place they can attack us from. We definitely have a pretty solid defense there. So let's come check out what's through here. We're generating a good amount of food right now. This is a one-way exit. Okay. Rather, what am I trying to say? A one-way exit. A room that has nowhere else you can go. we got a max level toothpick. But it's still only 18 power, which means it's less good than the fire pick that we've got here, so it's just junk. We can sell it for more dust, but it's probably not worth much, because it is still a low-tier item. Not particularly valuable. If we sell this, yeah, it's only worth 5 dust. We'll hold on to that and maybe get something better out of it. We'll send these guys over to the defensible position, and we'll see what happens. Hopefully we can get through here. There are a lot of tough, nasty-looking enemies coming our way whole lot of them. And Jalari, you're taking a ton of damage to the face as always. I'm going to use your War Rider ability so that your personal defense goes up. And we'll see what happens here. I'm also going to use the Shrapnelizer here. Because that should wreck the bad guys. Oh, wow. Wow. That Shrapnelizer ability destroyed them. Just cleaned the room. Wow, okay, I guess I should, uh, I owe that, that, what, that ability an apology, because I kind of underestimated it prior to this. That was amazing. Let's, uh, let's briefly let her repair these things. And these ones, and then we'll go explore over here, which is where the door's gotta be. We've explored literally everywhere else. Let's go. I'm tempted to take the power out of this room and put it in here, though, so they can't ambush us from this side. I don't really want to have to fight a war on two fronts here if I can help it. Especially not with that uh, slowdown room there. But we should be able to at least defend ourselves somewhat here. We've got a bunch of weapons set up along the way. We are getting a decent amount of food, too, so hopefully we'll be able to keep leveling up and stay ahead of our foes. But it's starting to get really expensive to do emergency heals, so we need to kind of avoid doing that. What's in this room? Exit? Is it the exit? No, it's a cryo chamber though. Let's try it. Activate. 20 food. Alright, I'll take it. We traded 20 in industry for 20 food. Not amazing, but you know, not a bad trade either. Unfortunately, I already used hold the line, so I can't book it back there any faster. They're probably going to get through this room this time. Which is not good. We do not want to be fighting in our core. 
Is there any way we can move any faster? I could get him to run faster with Psycho Killer, but he's still way at the back. I'm gonna use it anyway. Charge forwards with Psycho Killer. We need to make sure they're not attacking our core if we can help it in any way. Ideally, we want to fight in here, because that gives us the mind control effects and such, which are actually seriously beneficial to us. Thankfully, though, it just seems like the enemy selection on this floor is just non-hostile. They, rather, to our buildings, anyway. They're trying to kill us as hard as they can, but for the most part, apart from these big crystal guys, they don't seem particularly interested in destroying our things, which is really good. Alright, quickly repair all of our turrets so they don't break the next time one of those big crystal guys come by. Okay, and in this way. Let's take a quick look at our heroes and see who gets the next level up. So, we have no passive for you. We have yes passive for you. We have yes passive for you. Okay, Elise Ness, you're going to get the next level up then. Gets you three more defense and three more DPS as well as a bit more health. What is this? The Iron Fist. Attack power plus four for each other hero in the room. Ooh. That's good. Not as good as if we were doing a four-character battle party, but that is still pretty darn good. That's 12 extra power. Or no, eight extra power, sorry, just for having her friends in the room. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. Okay, let's get over here. We're basically done this place. I think the exit door has to be down here. And then we basically got this in the bag if we can get there. So let's try and get there. We're probably going to have to face one more ambush on the way out, but... Is this the exit door? No, there's nothing in this room. Okay, next door. Is this the exit door? Nope. Five waves incoming. Oh my goodness. Okay, we need to start thinking about just booking it for the exit here. Because they are going to hit us hard. We need to get back... We need to get back to our core. They're going to start hitting it before we can get there for sure. Alright, ride like the wind. Ride like the wind. We cannot afford to lose power to everything we have. That's a, We just lost about 40 power. That is really bad. Really bad. Okay, we... We're in a pickle indeed here. Let us... I don't want to armchair generally because we don't know how far away the, the exit actually is, but I think we're just going to have to push out this way and try and get there this turn. The longer we wait, the more waves we're going to get thrown at us, and I don't think we can survive many more than this. So we're going to armchair general here. We'll try and buff up your power. You're going to be uh, hold the lining. I really don't want to waste this power. This is incredibly good, and we're not going to get a chance to refresh it, but I'm going to use it anyway because you need to not die here. I'm going to burn this on healing you. Once Armchair General wears off, I'm going to bring you in to help. The damage you're taking is becoming incredibly high, but you're protecting our core, so I can't afford to move you. The other two are almost there. This is why we generate so much food, so that in emergencies we can stay alive. Your hold the line has worn off now, hasn't it? Yes, it has, so you're no longer safe. What we're going to do then, now that uh, Sarah's in here... You're still fighting a pretty crazy stack of enemies, so you're going to hit the Shrapnelizer. And that should vaporize most of our remaining enemies. Everybody comes in here to help. You're healing. Oh, that's what I was talking about. This, this symbol here means there's a spawner over here. So if we don't get over there and kill it, it's just going to keep throwing enemies at us, which is not good. But... We've been able to at least reduce their numbers now, which is important. Okay, and we have one person still attacking our crystal like a butthead. There we go. So what we need to do now is we need to send most of our army over this way to go deal with this. We're going to be powering down all of these rooms, except for that one, obviously, because we can't power down that one. And we're going to be doing a rush over in this direction. We need to send everybody over here, except for you, because you need to grab the crystal. So... That horrible mass is what's causing this problem. It's spawning more enemies. Unfortunately, we can't afford to grab this until we kill that guy because we don't regenerate our health until we do, and we need to have full health for this rush. Ugh, okay, you need to fight him because he'll destroy our things. There we go. Keep going. That guy's mind-controlled. He's helping us kill it. That's awesome. All right, you're going to stay here and kill this one when he gets back to here. 
Okay, we're all regenerated. So, it is time for us to make a mad dash. We're going to send everybody over here, except for Jaleri, who is going to grab the final crystal. Oh, I can't, because I haven't found the exit yet. I actually can't grab it. Okay, Jaleri, you're going to stay here. We're going to get everybody else. Hmm, I don't like this at all. Everybody else is going to hit that door. Jaleri, you're going to stay here. That's, this is going to be bad news. This is just going to be bad news. There's no way around it right now. We've got defenses all set up along this line, which is good. So we might be able to get past here if we have to rush it. But it is not going to be good. Let's throw in another pepper spray here. Another prisoner prod here. This is where things go sour for us. Either this is what we need and there's no more rush waves right now. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, it's the last door of the dungeon. Grab the crystal. We found the exit. Good. Is there any bad guys in here? No. Good. Okay, we need to power this room, so we're gonna depower this one. Power that one. We're gonna throw down some defenses in here quickly. We're gonna throw in a tear gas and a prisoner prod and a mind control. It might be worth just putting more mind controls in because they seem to be particularly effective at helping us here, but at the moment I'm just trying to stay alive. We're gonna throw in some prisoner prods over here as well. And in this room, I'm gonna hopefully not have to deal with that problem. All right, so you guys, what we're gonna do is you are gonna come back over to here so nothing spawns in there, hopefully. Everybody is gonna come back to this room except for you're going to go in here, actually, because you're faster. You guys, Jaleri, you're going to grab the crystal, and we're going to hope for the best. We might be a little bit too slow to stop them from spawning near our exit, but we're just going to have to hope for the best here. Alright, get out. Get out. It's no greater weight than duty and honor, you know it. Alright, nothing spawned in there, that's good. We should be able to make it out, then. We've got enough defensive towers in here with mind control and beneficial effects that we should be able to stop them from chasing us all the way to the exit. Okay. Oh, thank goodness. Those mind controls are so good. They're nowhere near us. That's amazing. The mind controls last for so long at high level. It's awesome. Just watching the red dots here, not me able to make it down to us has been pretty sweet. Now nah, they're getting here. They spawned enough over there, they got past the mind control effect. They're still getting shot at, though. We might be okay here for a little while. So as soon as these guys walk into the room, they're getting destroyed. That is a wave of death, though. Look at that. That's all monsters coming to kill us. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah, we could not afford to wait any longer here. Finding the exit as your last room is a scary thing. Look at all of that evil coming our way. That is some craziness right there. Wow. Alright, it's time for us to bail out of this place. Before that wall of death gets here. So... Let's just uh, revel in the knowledge that all of this is about to instantaneously explode. Exit. Oh man, that was some craziness right there. Alright, we leave with 126 industry, 65 science, 65 food. They took 12 minutes apparently. 12 minutes turns out to be 35 minutes almost. <laughs> wow. We've killed 1400 monsters, opened 15, or 155 doors. That's amazing. All right, so which comes first, ready or aim? That part always confused me. And that is our end of the floor. Wow, craziness. Thank you all for watching. This has been Vanguard of Valor, trying to survive the Dungeon of the Endless. If you've enjoyed this video so far, let me know about it in the comments below. Thank you again very much for watching, and look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye our characters appropriately so they can keep up with the enemies. 
because it's definitely again giving us a hard time. This is a three exits elevator, not ideal, but definitely not terrible either. We are going to send the whole team out through this door and see what we can find. Hopefully there's something good around here. We're also down to only having 16 power for floor, and this is also where the floors start to become evil. But you'll see what I mean as we get a little bit further in here. The enemy waves start to do something really nasty at this floor, and we're going to have to deal with it, and it might not be pretty. Stick ourselves in an industry generator here, and we're going to leave... Uh, Leave the warden here so that we can actually make sure that even if we don't find anything we can power, we're getting some benefit from him. Because we're going to need to start getting dust pretty quick here, otherwise we can't run these rooms. Like this one. We already do not have enough power to run our second room, which is kind of disconcerting. Let's open another door, though, and see what we can get. Hopefully we get some dust from this area. Nope. We did activate a stell, though, and this one has... Oh. Healing is now twice as expensive for three turns. That's not quite what I was hoping for. Let's go open another door, and hopefully we'll be able to get something good. Some dust somewhere. There's a little bit of dust. We can power this now. That's an unusual-looking beastie. Oh, that's just the blue snakes. Okay. We've seen them before. Just deceptively evil-looking. Okay. Well, this is not where we want to start building up out here. This is a dead-end room. That's good for us. But still no dust, so... It's good, but not great. And more enemies are back. Let's get in the defensive room and try and do what we can to stop them. We really don't have much in the way of defenses right now. Not much at all, I'm afraid. We're also starting to fight enemies whose behavior I'm less familiar with. Thankfully, it seems like they're all basically just targeting us as players. So that's not as bad as it could have been. Let's send you guys up here and check what's through this door. And another dead end. Okay, well. Oh, this is another character in here, Sarah. Unfortunately, we still have a full roster, so we won't be accepting any new characters, but at least we know this whole area is effectively a dead end, except for, well, maybe that way. Oh. Okay, take it back. We did get enough dust to power one more room, though, which might be nice. Honestly, though, it's it's not a whole lot of, uh, of security at the moment, since we don't have a whole lot of other large spaces to protect yet. This might be a good place to put that power once we get the opportunity. For now, though, we're going to come explore down here and see what's at the bottom of this room. It's a large one, so if the enemies appear behind us, we could be in a bit of trouble. But we do have a pretty fast hero here who should be able to get back and stop him. In here we find a treasure chest, though, and that's nice. Inside we find... Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to another episode of Dungeon of the Endless. Here we are on floor 8, we're actually making it close to where I have, uh, the furthest I've ever reached. But we have a pretty solid team right now, we've got three pretty heavy hitters, we have a, uh, two ranged heavy hitters here with Elise Ness and Gork Karozer, who both have some pretty heavy, uh, firepower on their hands. We have, uh, Lady Jolari Tulak, who is our dedicated tank, although she's starting to take a whole lot of damage. I think we need to maybe dedicate her some better armor than just this t-shirt. I think we're actually going to do that right now. If we swap this titanium shirt with the uh, zone device fancy pants uh, neuro stun light armor that we gave to Gork, that might make her a little bit more survivable because this is a 10 defense bonus and this is a 25 defense bonus, which is a pretty huge difference. So we're going to try giving her this instead and seeing if that makes it a little bit harder for her to get horribly murdered all the time because she's definitely taking a lot of damage. Overall, though, these guys have been doing a pretty good job. We also have a support character here in the form of Warden Mormish, who has been keeping our systems running at optimum levels to make sure that we can get as much power and resources out of them as possible to keep level. A Gatling gun. Well, I'm kind of annoyed I purchased one of those now, but it might be better. Or worse. It's worse. All right, slightly lower quality than the blue one we got already. Blue is generally a pretty high quality gear. I think purple is slightly higher, but it's also much rarer. All right, well, I can't complain about getting free things. We can sell it and hopefully get some good resources out of it from uh, a salesman somewhere along the line. Let's check one more room here, and then we will see what else we can do. This is a dead-end room, which is exactly what I was hoping for. It does have enemies in it, but that's fine. We're going to book it back to the exit, rather back to our secure zone. Somewhat secure, at least. And at least now we know that we don't have to look in this area anymore, so hopefully we can uh, be a little bit less dedicated to this side of the battlefield. We do have 198 food to spend, so I may spend that on some upgrades here. 
probably going to upgrade Elise Ness. In fact, I will just upgrade her. That gets her four more defense, which is good. Some more damage, another wit point, which is pretty cool. Next point in her gets her a passive. What about anybody else? Passive for you. Passive for you. No passive for you. So everybody other than Gork gets a passive ability the next level up, which makes it pretty valuable to us. Do you get a wit point? No, you don't get a wit point. I was hoping you'd get more wit because we get more, uh, more resources from you, but I'll take what I can get. All right, here comes the bad guys. We should be able to tear through them pretty quick for uh, our food production because we can't safely put our uh, our support character over here and make him more likely to not have any enemies attacking him. But this might be a good place to start building defenses because we can actually uh, lock them down a little bit better in the large room. So we'll throw down two prisoner prods in here and we'll do a tear gas and a pepper spray because that's a pretty decent setup for actually locking down our enemies. And we will probably build something in here. What do I want to stick in there? Maybe a food replicator anyway and I might just not power it yet. That seems like a plan. That way, when we want to move over and start leveling ourselves up faster, we can. Alright, what's down this way instead? Still no dust. Alright, we are in a worrying dust situation here. Still no dust, but we did find enemies. Okay. We may want to back up to this room instead of fighting them in here. Just because, yep, as I suspected, more enemies are already incoming. This is gonna hurt, most likely. We're already taking a ton of damage here, which is worrying for the first real wave of the floor. Thankfully, we have a good amount of firepower support here, so we were able to survive that without too much trouble, but... I don't know. If we can't get any more dust than two rooms right off the bat, we are gonna have a hard time. Let's take a look in.